It's crazy. The past two and a half years, so much has changed. I am living my ultimate life right now. I love it. Go off. I will put myself in that situation almost like I've already lived it. He's a manifester, Mimi. You only have one chance at living that life is literally so precious. Rich people aren't happy. Why do you want to be rich? Wow. I was not in a good place in many areas. You know, $8 in my bank account. And it honestly gets me emotional even just thinking it. It just starts by slowly doing those things for a long, long period of time consistently. That's how I have proof. Mimi is back in studio. Welcome. I think the first question I'm going to ask you is, how have you evolved as a person since our last episode two years ago that absolutely crushed it, by the way, you guys should go listen. So much has changed, Lauren. Like I have transformed as a person every single year that passes that I've been on this like personal development journey. It happens faster and faster. That transformation, that growth happens faster and faster. And maybe it's because I'm honing in on what works more. And every year I learn about what works more. But it's crazy. The past two and a half years, so much has changed with my business, with myself. I have started living a completely different life. I think when I first came on the show, I shared about my journey going from, you know, eight dollars in my bank account to having a business and, you know, transforming my body and my health and my mindset. But I think over the past two and a half years since I last saw you guys, that has all quadrupled. So I feel like a different person. I have transformed even more in all of those departments financially to my mindset, my health, my body, to my relationships. Like it just keeps getting better and better. So to be honest with you, I'm really excited to come back on because it's just, I feel like I can bring a completely different level. You were awesome the, the first time though. So don't like, don't people that haven't heard that episode, you should I go back. I was cute back then. It was cute. But I feel like now I'm like future self Mimi. How are you implementing daily habits to evolve? Like what are the little things that you're doing on a daily basis with this evolution? So I have actually stopped being so routined since I last saw you. I love it. Go on. Which off. is super interesting. So I've realized that it's actually not about the morning routine. It's actually not about these tiny disciplined little habits. Go off. It's about your self-image. Okay. Because if you at the core believe you are a certain person and you at the core believe you have a certain personality, that you are a type of person that dot, 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 fill in the blank, that determines your future more than any habit. Because guess what? When you have the self-image of that, quote, future self, you're naturally going to do those things. It's not hard anymore. So that is what I've, ta I've tapped into, honestly, the past two years. And it's like skyrocketed who I am, how much I've been able to earn. Because financially, it's, it's a really good metric, I think, to look at when you're transforming your life because it's so simple. You know, it's numbers. It's black and white. You can look at your mindset over the years and think, yeah, I'm a bit happier now. But really, like it's just reflected in every area of my life financially to just my happiness levels every day, to my fulfillment, to my ability to just truly be myself. And I can honestly say, and it honestly gets me emotional even just thinking it, like I am living my ultimate life right now. And it's like, I am so grateful for my past self for putting in that work because I'm here and I'm just living it every day. And it's like, we all do this work to get to a place. But then when you get to the place, it's like that growth keeps happening, but you're just living it. And that's the beauty of life. You know, you really want to get to that place and enjoy it and enjoy your, your journey there as well. And I'm just feeling so happy and grateful right now. Do you think if, if you could go back and tell the Mimi two years ago, like what are the things that you would tell her to get to this place that you are now? Just keep doing exactly what you're doing because you're going to get there. With You mentioned, though, your self-worth. How did you have that epiphany? My experience with personal development, with creating my dream life, it hasn't been like I wake up one morning and I have an epiphany. It's just been that consistent chipping away, doing what I know deep down in my gut I should be doing. And then slowly over time, it happens. I wish it was like one morning I wake up and I have a realization, but it's not that. It's that tuning into that curiosity inside of me of how can I be better? How can I be that ultimate self? It's having clarity about who that ultimate self is. That's step one in my two-step formula to transformation. It's clarity, step one. Before anybody wants to create any goals or take any action towards living their dream life, they first need to have 
clarity on who their future self is, that ultimate self. We all have a vision in our minds and we need to make that very clear before we move to step two. And step two is becoming. You must then become the version of you that already has those things. Your self-image creates your life. So instead of doing all those things that you know you need to be doing or you think you need to be doing, like the morning routine, the cold plunge, the this, the that, like strip that all back for a moment and just think to yourself, who is the version of me who already lives that future life I want? And how can I become them? Because if you become them and you work on your self-image transformation first, everything else comes naturally. Just like if, you know, you want to start running, okay, and you don't have the self-image of a runner. It's going to be so hard to get up, put your running shoes on and start running. But if you already believe deep down, oh, I'm a runner, then in the morning, it's not going to be hard to put on your running shoes and go on a run because it's just like you really you feel weird if you don't do it. It's It's just part of you identity, self-image, yeah. kind you of know, the same thing. It, like we've interviewed so many people at this point over the last eight years. And I think a lot of our listeners tune into the show and they think they're going to listen to an episode like this or a different one. And they're going to get this one thing and it's gonna be like, oh, I'm going to change. And that's going to be the thing that instantly changes my life. And you said something as you were talking, which is it's just these slow, steady, consistent things mm-hmm. that you do m- mundanely time over and over, like not so exciting that slowly start to change you and make you a different person. And what I, the reason I mentioned that is I think like whether it's something like a podcast or if you want to be a runner, if you want to work out, or if you want to eat better, it's like it just starts by slowly doing those things for a long, long period of time consistently. Like it's not like, hey, yeah. there's a hack or there's something that they're going to discover right away that's going to ha- make it happen for them. It's just you have to start doing the stuff. Yeah, but an easier version, Michael, actually is visualizing yourself as the person that does it and taking action. Sure, but if you don't, but, t- yeah, yes. But yes, taking action is always 100% the biggest thing, but to make it easier to take action. And you go and you change your subconscious with, for me, it's been listening to audios of my future self my whole life, trying to get to this place, getting clarity, inundating my mind with the version of me that I want to be a clear image of my future. And when I visualize, when any of us use mental rehearsal before doing the thing, it A, makes it more likely for us to actually do it. And B, it changes our self-image in the process so that it becomes more of a habit. Yes. I think yes and yes. The visualization is obviously extremely important, but I think sometimes we fall into a trap where you have a very strong vision of who you want to be. But But you don't do the thing. But you don't do the thing. You're not willing to actually do the thing that that person would do. So like if I... If I say that I'm going to be a great husband and father, like just the image I have of myself, but then I'm out every night with the guys drinking and like not showing up to my kids' recitals over doing that, like that is counter to who I want to be. Like that, that there's certain things that in behaviors that I have to do and sacrifices I have to make to be able to be that thing. And and that you could take that to working out yeah. or to business or whatever it is. Like I think sometimes we have a really strong visual of who we want to be, but it's not followed up with the things we you know don't embody we have to it. do. Yeah. But you don't, you yes. have to embody it, right? Yes. You know, like that feeling, that conscious feeling inside of you of like being that version of you. What does it actually feel like? And nobody, people can have a vision board and they can think they know what they want, but not many people actually sit in the feeling of what it would feel like to be that person. What is the person that you visualize when you do these visualizations? Like maybe give us a little yeah. look into Mimi's brain. Well, it always changes, it's ever evolving because. I'm up leveling every single day. And currently that visualization is the most grounded, calm, but yet magnetic and beautiful energy version of myself. Like I really am now working on, cause you know, the past three years I've been building my business. I've been really exposed to things that could make me very stressed and, you know, I've been go, go, go for the past three years. And I'm now over the past three, four months, I've been working on this next level future self version of me that more so embodies that calm, grounded, self-assured feeling and also that like magnetic ambition and wealthy energy. So, you know, before I was achieving all these things, but I was in a little bit more of this like big chaotic energy that was still positive most of the time. But now I've really started to visualize this more like grounded, calm, wealthy, magnetic version of me. What is it like being engaged to you? 
for your fiance <laughs> because a lot of yeah. men would not be able to handle some of the things you just said. I'm, I'm curious to what he's like and how you guys are intertwined on a day to day basis. He is so different to me. And we've been together almost seven years now. He's my first boyfriend. And Ever? Yes. <laughs> In your entire life? That's so cute. Yeah, I was 21. Wow. I know. Well, you know, I, back in the day, I was like partying a lot. Probably wasn't girlfriend material. So he was the first one that took a chance. I mean, he says the Mimi stock was the best investment he ever made. Oh, yeah. that's so cute. I was like 20 pounds heavier, like minus net worth, like hated myself. I like just really wasn't who I am today when we first met. And like, he's definitely experienced watching me grow and him alongside me growing in his own way. So I think if you asked him, what's it like being engaged to me? He would just say, it's not boring. It's a wild ride. And, you know, it's, we both live a very interesting life. And I think a lot of the time, you know, I drive some of that, but he is really that grounded, like really safe energy to me. And do you guys work together or is it separate? No, he has his own thing. Separate things. Yeah. And is he as committed to his own business as you are? I think in a different way. He's very logical and like has sometimes some trouble like thinking huge. And I'm kind of like the opposite. I'm like thinking so big and we'll figure out the rest later type of thing. Um, So yes, in his own way, he is absolutely ambitious. Um, But I think, you know, we, we both work in very different ways and we kind of stay out of each other's work lives. Um, Definitely. You know, I think I like it that way because we have our own things. We live together. We both work from home. It's really nice to kind of be separate. You mentioned earlier questions that people who are listening should ask themselves. What are some other questions that you could sort of give the audience to sit with if they don't know where to start and they feel overwhelmed with life? What are questions that they could maybe sit down and do like a worksheet, like a Mimi worksheet? Well, for sure. We have writing activations on the app. So like so many journaling sessions that are perfectly guided with beautiful music to help you on the spot. If I'm thinking if someone's needing clarity and really needing direction in their lives, I would actually start with getting out a journal and just like doing a brain dump of everything that they might want in life and then refining it from there. I always find like a brain dump journaling session is the best because you just like put everything on paper. And once it's there, it's like half of your problems are solved, you know? So that's what I would say is like initially just start with free flow writing for specific more questions, listen to something like a writing activation. Like, you know, would I be satisfied if in five years I was in this place? Like describe the daily life that you want to live. Like how, what do you do when you wake up? Do you go to the gym? Do you have your own business? Do you work with people? Do you live or, you know, do you work by yourself? Like what is it that you actually want to experience in your day and get super clear? And then you can like reverse engineer from there. It's like, okay, what kind of businesses would I be good at if you want to start your own thing? Or, you know, what would I have to be doing every day? What self image would I need to embody to get to this place? Because the reality is we all have huge ambitious goals, but the version of us before getting there might not even be able to handle those goals until they embody the self-image of their future. So for me, what I believe is that you first need to have that energy of your future, that self-image of your future before it happens. You don't just get the thing and then you finally become happy and free and abundant. It's like you have to feel it first. You have to literally act as if you're already there. And then your self-image starts changing. You start changing. Opportunities, you know, become front and center in your life because the RAS in your brain starts to readjust the reticular activating system. That is the filtration system that decides on what you actually consciously focus on. It's like the filter in your brain. If we all saw everything at at once and we were noticing every single tiny thing around us, our brains would literally like explode. There's too much information. So our RAS is filtered by, by our belief system. So if we believe, for an example, oh, I'm a victim, you know, I can't have this life because I was born into a poor family or because I don't look this way. Okay, if that's your belief, then guess what? You're going to start seeing reasons everywhere why you're a victim. But if you have the belief, you know what? I can be empowered. I can 
change my life, my story. You know, it's just part of my 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 journey. And and because of me not growing up in a wealthy household, maybe that's the motivator. And I wanted even more because of that. And you create these stories in your mind. And then if you're empowered and you're like, okay, I'm about to have my big break. I'm about to have my big break. You start seeing opportunities around you and they just start showing up out of nowhere. It seems that they were always there. You're just starting to notice it. Just like the whole, you know, if you're going to buy a red car, you start seeing it everywhere. Like that whole, um, you know, concept. It's the same thing. Do you see a lot of victim mentality with what you do? Do you see like in your DMs or do you see more abundance? Honestly, I see more abundance because I think, you know, my persona, my, you know, Instagram, my business, it really attracts people that feel empowered to change their lives. So I don't really, I guess, communicate too much with people that don't believe they have the potential to change. But I would be so I'd love to have those conversations more like I'd love for those people to want to watch my content because I feel like that would help them. I used to be a victim when I was younger. And before I, you know, created this dream life, I thought to myself, well, I don't have it easy. You know, my parents didn't come from money. I was supporting myself ever since I left home. And, you know, I, I felt very alone at that time. And I just had to change that. And when I did, everything started changing. But to change that, I'm just trying to think now, like, how did I change my victim mentality? I think I just wanted it so badly. I think I wanted this amazing dream life so badly that I was open to hearing information like this. And I think when I read my first personal development book at 17 years old, like one of the first chapters was take 100% responsibility for your life. Which book was it? The Success Principles by Jack Canfield. Yeah, it's I mean, like, it's Bible. just, but, <laughs> write that down. I think w- that. when it comes to being a victim, the, it, to take a logical perspective on all of it, not judging anyone's past experience, not getting into the conversation of privilege, namely because people just need to hear this really clearly. It is completely useless and pointless to even get into all of that. It doesn't do anything. Meaning like it doesn't matter who's got privilege and it doesn't matter who's a victim. Logically, if you view yourself as a victim, you will always be one. There's no way for you to, to reach prosperity because you're only to your point going to see things that are going to oppress you. You're only going to look at reasons why you shouldn't have. You're only going to look at reasons why somebody has something and you don't. And you start to say like, oh, I'm somebody with opportunity. Then that's how your brain's going to start to filter things and think about things. But if you constantly tell yourself reasons why you don't or reasons why you can't or reasons why somebody else has, you're just going to stay where you are and potentially get worse, right? And so like logically, I think for people that want to get out of that mindset, it's like you just have to understand that the longer you keep that mindset, the longer you're going to stay where you are. There's no way yeah. to get out of it until you stop thinking that way. We just had Easier a, said than done, a podcast but that's the guest that came on right before you and she said something that's like very on brand to this conversation. She says her kids ask for like the brand new iPhone or they'll ask for something like really like extravagant and she'll say, yes, you can get it. You can get anything you want. And a lot of us were told, I was not told this, but I know a lot of people were told money doesn't grow on trees. Like what a scarcity mindset. The caveat though with with the, with her and her kids was that she then says, "But you have to go do something and create some kind of value and mm. do some kind of and create some kind of productivity mm-hmm. in order to do it." But you can have it if you do those things. Yeah, yeah. No, I couldn't agree more. I grew up and bless my parents. I love them, and they've done their own personal development over the years. But I grew up with my mom saying to me, "Rich people aren't happy. Why do you want to be rich?" Wow. Yeah. I'm happy. Yeah. I'm, I'm really happy. I know. <laughs> now she's obviously changed. Like she. You know, my parents are were struggling artists like our whole life. Like they were always fighting about money, but then they're like, well, at least, you know, we don't have those problems. And I think they probably said that to themselves to make them feel better. But, you know, I remember like really at like 12 years old having an argument with my mom at her art studio. And she's like, Mimi, why do you want that? Like, or I told her maybe that I wanted to be successful or something. She's like, yeah, but, you know, rich people aren't really happy. So and I would argue her on it. Well, there's truth to that. I mean, plenty of rich people are very Plenty of poor people are unhappy. (laughs) Money, like money, you know, honestly, money is one of those things that accentuates who you already are. Right. Mm-hmm. I I personally believe that if mon- if money means that someone's a bad person, like when I was growing up, my dad, if like a Range Rover sped by, he'd be like, oh, but if a Toyota did, he wouldn't say anything. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like. But money's the same way. Like if you look at money as a scarce resource that is limited and that you can't have, that is going to be a, stro- a source of a lot of stress and unhappiness. If you look at money as 
an abundant resource that is mm-hmm. endless that you can get plenty of if you do certain things, then you're going to look at money differently, right? And I think, again, it's just like, it's like perspective on anything. Stock markets going down, people think the world's ending. Some people look and say, wow, I'm going to get a bargain it's price. It's a great op- opportunity. Yeah, exactly. and it's just like, it's, it's always perspective, right? Yes. Like. And and I and I think like we as humans have and you talk about this a lot have the ability to choose which perspective we're going to take. Mm. It's not forced. You don't have to have the perspective of scarcity or victimness, or you, and you don't have to have or being a victim, and you don't have to have the perspective that everything's going wrong. You can yeah. you can choose even in in terrible moments to look at what's going right. Because many people don't. The opposite of a victim mentality is an empowered mentality. Mm-hmm. It's the oh, what if I can. You know, and I would rather live in that state of being. And, you know, listen, I empathize with people that feel really stuck and like, you know, the world's against them and that they're in this place of being a victim because I was there once. But I will say that I needed someone to push me back then or a book or some voice to push me and to give me an opportunity to have a different perspective. And that's what changed my life. So at the end of the day, a lot of people just need tough love. And the reality is that you can be empowered. You can have that life that you want. All of us, everyone listening, you can literally create that life that you deep down in your gut want. And you should start listening to that voice more. Don't block it out because you're scared of change or you're scared of failure or getting rejected. Keep tuning into that voice because the more that you do that and the more that you move towards that life and take those big risks and become that version of you that has it, the happier and more fulfilled you'll be. I think that a lot of people too are un- uh, very, they're almost scared of in- uncertainty. It's like they'd rather sit with being so uncomfortable in a victim mindset as long as they don't have to experience uncertainty. Like I have someone that I know in my life that They want everything to be like certain. And that's not the way life works. Life is fluid and there's pivots and there's transitions and different people come in and out. And and Tony Robbins talks about this too all the time. It's like uncertainty is just part of it, but people just, uncertainty just scares the shit out of them. We're not like designed to want to change a lot. Like our brains, we like safety and we would honestly rather stay in a situation that is not pleasant, then go outside of our comfort zone and do something and get to that next level. So, you know, at the end of the day, what I would say to those people that are scared of change, it's remember that we only have one life. Because whenever I connect with that complete fact that we only have one chance at this thing, I'm already a third done with this one life. Like, Time no, is precious. Time. Well, yeah, well, I'm I'm going to be doing all my stem cells and maybe stuff. A so maybe a fourth. Maybe a fourth. But, you know, the, that's the truth. And we don't talk about it enough. We don't talk about the fact that we literally only have one chance at this thing. Why freaking waste your one shot at life not being who you're meant to be? Because we're really good at procrastinating. And no, we're but really you, good we're at- really good at not remembering that fact that life is literally so precious because if everyone consciously every single day remembered that you only have one chance at living, they would do so much more out of their comfort zones. They would literally become that next level version of them because they have more of that driver, that push, that push to actually take action. And I don't know about you, but my biggest fear in life is waking up one morning when I'm in my old age and looking back on my life and feeling regret. You can't go back when you're at that point. Right now is the time. You you have to stop waiting. And that is what scares me the most is that I'm not going to reach my potential. And I think that's what has driven me over the years. It's like I want to live my most full potential life because I only have one shot at this. I love it. <laughs> I want to know more about your transformation when it comes to health and wellness. You mentioned on our podcast the first time that you had lost a little weight. Um, you said 20 pounds, right? Yeah. Like I was not healthy and I binge ate all the time and I was partying a lot, doing drugs. And the next day, like eating a whole pizza because I was just like feeling like shit about myself. I was not in a good place in many areas in my, you know, probably a decade ago, my late teens and, you know, early twenties. And, um, it was not good. You know, I was definitely a completely different version of me. I was so disconnected to who I truly am. I was consumed with 
the opinions of others. I wanted to fit in and be, quote, cool at, you know, university or high school, drinking a lot, doing a lot of coke and getting fucked up and like being that like fun, cool girl. It is so not me. <laughs> I know. I was just going to say this. So yeah. It's when no, you I talk had a like completely that, like, 180. No, a complete 180. I'm telling you, I would, I like, I did drugs young because I grew up in a big city and I li- grew up in Toronto with, I have an older sister who was not <laughs> the best influence at that age. And, you know, I was going to high school dances on MDMA. I was doing coke at prom. Like I was nuts. And I think because I went through such an extreme time when I was at that age, like I also just like switched out of it in an extreme way because I just suddenly was like, I hate how I feel. I hate the person I'm becoming. I had a pretty intense transformative time when I around that time I read that personal development book at 18. And um, I realized, you know, and it didn't happen overnight, but I realized that I wanted to start changing and I wanted to start improving my life. And I also realized that you know, that little voice inside of me that I was talking about earlier, like that kept telling me like I meant for big things. Keep going. Do something different. You know, stop trying to be like everyone else, impress everyone else. Because guess what? If you are going to act like everyone else, you're going to end up like everyone else. And I was around these people that I didn't want to end up like. And I know that might sound, you know, a bit, um, I guess, like judgmental. But I, I, I was, you know, at a place where I wasn't hanging out with a good crowd. And I just really... I knew that I was meant for bigger things. And I think every single one of us has that voice inside of us that's like, there's more to this. You're meant for more. So I'm not special having that little voice. Everyone has it, but I tuned into it. I I think it's like we we live in a time where people feel they need to apologize for wanting to be better and wanting Mm. to be different and wanting to not be average. But isn't that what everyone's hopes and dreams are? Just like they're scared to they're scared to voice them and they're scared to say like, hey, maybe I'm in the wrong friend group or hey, maybe I'm like I shouldn't be behaving this way or maybe I should take care of myself or maybe I should hold myself to a higher standard. Right. Like there's like a source of shame by saying you want to break out of being average. I see it a lot, like especially talking to a lot of people. And I've never understood that message because to your point, like the whole goal in life, for, at least for me, is to live up to my full potential. And I'm not passing, ju- I honestly could care less how most people conduct their lives, but I'm not going to be, I don't want to do things that I know are going to hinder me from that potential. And I feel like people need to be comfortable getting to a place where they voice that more openly to people around them. And if the people around you are trying to stifle you or hold you back from that, then they're not the right people for you. You're an average of the five people that you mm-hmm. surround yourself with most. When I went through this initial phase in my transformation, I was like, oh my goodness, when I had this realization, this new belief change, I really just decided to alienate myself from most people in my life. And I needed that time alone and needed that time just inundating my mind with the right information. I was reprogramming my subconscious. Like I knew that I needed radical change. And that being said, I was in a place where I needed radical change. A lot of people listening are in a place where their life's good. It's fine but they want a lot more and they don't know how to get there. So, you know, if you're in that place, it's it's really just a lot more simple. Well, A, stop hanging around people that you don't want to end up like, really, or you're an average of the five people you surround yourself with most. So just keep that in mind. And B, like, if you keep thinking the same thoughts every day and you keep believing the same things and doing the exact same things and just living the same life over and over again every single day, like don't expect anything to change. You you really need to realize that your thoughts and your beliefs and what goes on inside of your head, that dictates everything that ends up happening. The life you live today is completely because of the thoughts you've been thinking up to this point, the beliefs that you've had up to this point. Because if your beliefs change, that changes your self-image, your self-image, your identity that creates your life. So with a new belief, like I am empowered, I'm not a victim, everything starts to just very slowly change. You start seeing new things come up. You start becoming a new person. You become magnetic. Like, honestly, when I changed this self-image inside of me and I started believing that I was going to be a successful person, people would just come up to me and like, offer me opportunities. It sounds insane. And I have so many crazy manifestation stories. And like, I use the word manifestation with a grain of salt because I know it does have a certain connotation in like the spiritual space, that whole idea of just like think, 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 and then receive without doing any work. But what I'm talking about is like getting to that core self-image identity switch 
because then you naturally start doing the things that get you there. So that's what I'll say. And and when it comes to this work working, like I've seen it firsthand. I have so many crazy stories I could tell you just such incredible synchronicities that I'm like, yep, I don't know how it works, but it works. Give us an example. <laughs> well, like my first $100,000 month was a big one. Um, my business was consistently when I first started it, you know, it, it grew and, and maybe kind of in the first six months, it was at like 30, 40,000 in MRR, which um, monthly reoccurring revenue in the subscription space. And it was good. Like that's amazing. The subscription space is great. It's a it's great place to be. The best business to be in like the SaaS world from a business perspective. It's like just unreal because you create a community. Like it's not like a one-off you it's every single month. Um, but you know, you have to add that value. <laughs> so I'm really proud of superhuman because our churn rate is super low, which means that people don't unsubscribe a lot because that content is there and the value is there. Like the SaaS space, like it, it's, you can't fool anyone because it's, it's like consistent, you know, uh, revenue and people keep paying every month. But anyway, we were consistently doing like 30, 40 K a month, which is great. But in the SaaS space, it's pretty consistent income in, unless something crazy happens. So Um, this one month we were, let's just say it was 30,000 in MRR. And this one month I was really starting to embody that a hundred thousand dollar a month Mimi. I was really, really trying to get to that next level because six figures a month is a lot. Like it's a huge amount. And I think before that point, I was already like amazed at 30,000 a month, but I really, really focused that month on a hundred thousand dollar a month Mimi. And I embodied her energy. I became her. I wasn't perfect because it's not about perfection. It's about that bounce back rate. It's about getting back into that energy. Every time you realize you've fallen off track, it's not about being perfect 100% of the time. And let's talk about that later because it's been a whole other revelation of mine. Um, But, you know, I knew what I was going to expect from my business from a revenue perspective. And I had this like random opportunity pop up like last minute. And it was this like, commission deal. And um, do you remember like the bundle thing, like the ebook bundle thing people would sell? This is yeah. like a few years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So I like had one of my courses that I had back in the day on there and they like gave me this opportunity. They're like, okay, you make 50% of the revenue. I know my audience. I'm like, I don't have a massive audience online and I know what they buy. And I was like, okay, maybe I'll make 10 grand from this. So hell yeah, I'll do it. And I kind of just forgot about it. I posted about it a few times, like nothing excessive though. And I didn't even really know what my sales were with that until the end of the month. And I was just kind of going along in in my life and embodying my future self energy and listening to activations and doing what I know works. And at the end of the month, Superhuman had made like $32,000 or something. And then this commission deal was like $70,000 or like $68,000 or something that made it to be exactly 100K on the dot. And I was just like, what the hell? This is insane. It's on the dot. And then my, I kind of just like, you know, went back to my old self that next month in a way and didn't maintain that new vibration. And then went back to 30K and I was like, okay, obviously. And then I started over the months, you know, really tuning into that ultimate self energy and and then I had my first 100K day and it was like, oh my God. And then, you know, that kind of went away. And then steadily over time, it's just like, you know, I've maintained that new set point of my identity and I've improved it. So money for me has always been quite, not, I'm not going to say easy thing to manifest, but it's always been one of those things I was pretty good at manifesting. And I love to talk about it because it's like so numbers based and it's it's one of those things that's just so measurable. And that's how I have proof. You know, it's been one of those situations where, you know, I I embody it and I see things happen all the time. And that was just one example. Um, I have so many other examples, like my Hay House book deal is another example because I didn't know if we could talk about that. I don't don't know, but I I think so. It's it's coming out next spring. So it's not anytime soon. But uh, late last year, you know, I was working with my book agent and for years I wanted to write a book. And I was thinking to myself, okay, you know, now is time. I worked with my book agent on this pitch. Every time I would visualize when I was listening to the activations, I would visualize getting a multi six figure book deal, which is crazy because someone with my audience, like, honestly, it would have been like maybe 70, 80 K or, you know, I've never written a book before. That was kind of what my agent was expecting me to or assuming uh, for me. 
But I was like, no, let's just kind of like forget about that for a moment. Um, I want it to be like in the six figures. And I also want it to be with Penguin. And that's what I was manifesting. I was manifesting a book deal with Penguin for multiple six figures. Okay. Anyway, I end up doing the pitches and Penguin didn't want it. But then Hay House really wanted it. And we kind of like, um, you know, had a few other publishers and trusted, but Hay House was the one that stuck out to me. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. They're and definitely- just so you know, Hay House. Louise Hayes. Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. <laughs> uh, sorry, I got to tell you. So I forget about, you know, sometimes exactly what you want to manifest doesn't happen exactly as you wanted it to, but whatever. I was super grateful. And I got a very good book deal with Hay House that was aligned with my manifestations. And a few weeks after we signed the deal, my book agent, because she knew about my penguin manifestation. <laughs> she called me and she was like, you're really good at this. I was like, what do you mean? And she was like, Penguin just acquired Hay House. Whoa. <laughs> I was like, wow. That's crazy. Not because of me, but you know, it's just, it's funny how like, I think at the end of the day, you know, there's multiple realities that exist at all times. And I think sometimes with the quote manifestation type of word, it's just like tuning into a certain reality before it unfolds. I don't know. I know I it think sounds what a bit it is, spiritual. Is like but... Subconsciously, your brain, you believe that that is a possibility. So subconsciously, your brain actively shoots for that goal. So for yeah. example, with money, people that shoot low and don't like, if they say, I'm only going to make $500, it's likely you will only make $500. You'll settle for that. Yeah, that's what you're, you're subconsciously, that's your target. If you, like now that you've had a six figure month, your subconscious mind will start to either that's your base now or you will shoot higher because one, you've already- Or you revert back to who, or you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I deserve it. And then you go back. Like it really is all about who you're being in the moment. But yes, I understand. But the point is, is like you, like when you, like I think there's, there is truth to manifestation, but I think like the, how it practically works is you convince yourself and actually really believe that one, you deserve it Two, you can actively get there and three, that it's like a hundred percent possible. And so you are taking small, consistent actions every day in order for that to happen subconsciously. You don't even realize it. And I know you're quite a like logical, analytical person, but I will say, and I am too, and I kind of I live between- side. Okay. I do. He's tapping into it. All right. Oh, no, but, but this is the last no. episode he's evolved. No, no, no. <laughs> but this is what I want to say about that, Michael. But I'll t- so I'll tell you, because I know which, how you think, but here's how I think in my life. And I'll even, Lauren doesn't even know this about me. When I think about my future self, I think down to the detail of the fork and the glassware that I'll be using in a specific setting that I'll be in. What glassware automatically. are you using? I love well, this. I will think specifically, like if I'm get, going He's to build an meaning. office or Obviously, a company, I will around. think specifically <laughs> about even the texture of cloth that I'll be wearing in that instance. I know it sounds crazy. You're so crazy, good at this. No, you're really but, good but at what this. I, what I, I, will, I will put myself in that situation almost like I've already lived it, but not, yeah. like I think a mistake people make is they go and they're like, I'm going to be, in, and they, they have the big broad vision but it's like all about the details for me. It's like, I know what I'll be eating in that situation. What are you eating? What I'll be, we- what I'll be wearing. I what know are you wearing? the glassware that I'll just, it's not a specific <laughs> brand glassware? or thing. I just, I have like, it's, I, I make, I, I map the little tiny small things that I'll be doing in that particular instance to make it like just even more concrete in my mind. Does that make sense? It does. And that's definitely one that's way to do it. Side. No, that that's great. But what I was going to say, and by the way, I agree with you. So I don't even, I'm going to admit it. I don't even know what I believe in when it comes to all of this. All I know is that it works. A scientist will call it quantum physics. An atheist will call it the placebo effect. Someone that believes in God will say it's prayer. And a spiritualist will call it the law of attraction. I don't know what it is, but all I know is that it works. For me, when I embody the energy of my future, things in my life start to change. It is this beautiful game I have with the universe that we all can have with the universe where it's like, I honestly just reprogram this like energetic setting inside of me. And that aligns with that identity, that self image. And I visualize, but maybe not like you, Michael, I actually don't visualize to the tiny details. It's right. fun you're to gonna, do you're it. Gonna, you're gonna try it She's step. not visualizing I, her pocket square. I'm not visualizing my pocket <laughs> square, but I'm, but I'm embodying the energy of what it feels like to be wealthy and happy and full of awe and bliss and just that high vibration emotion. So that's what for me has worked. I think it's so Im- incredible that you're able to visualize the details of that would probably make it feel so real and that will probably work incredibly well. I but- think what it is, is that it's your, 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 I think what you're articulating is being said in a lot of the same way with all these people, which is that at the core of it, it is belief. Like exactly. you believe. Yeah. Like, and, if, and I think that's like the simple, like I believe in manifestation in the sense that 
it's a, it's it, if that instills a firm belief in your body and in your soul that you believe you can achieve something or have something then like that, that that's why to me it works i think if you because if you can't get to that core of like you believe you either deserve or can or whatever then you're just it's not never going to happen absolutely i think we're all saying the same thing in different ways and i think the biggest takeaway for the audience is just you need to be very focused on changing how you think and how you see yourself because if you see yourself as the kind of person who cannot do certain things, it's never going to happen. If you see yourself as the kind of person who is scared and small and will always live a quote average life, and that's that's literally what your future will look like. So I think the biggest takeaway is you must change your beliefs and your thoughts to then change your life, no matter whether it's the placebo effect or it's spiritual. I don't even know. It just works. That's what I think is so great about your activations is that it it makes you monitor the way you think. And I, I personally think that if you really want to be successful in every single area, you have to be watching the way you think and you have to switch the words. And this is what this whole conversation is mm-hmm. about. You have to switch the words of what you're saying and, and maneuver the sentences. And it's not about being perfect because you're going to have thoughts that come into your brain that are negative or not your highest self, but it's constantly being aware that you're having those thoughts so you can switch them. And it's all I think, about the bounce back rate. Right? I think and- like like Louise Hay like is like, that's why I, I relate to her so much and so much with what you're saying is because she's taught me to step back and being like, wait, what is this limited belief? Like, where did this come from? Yeah. Why do I have this? And having grace with myself, but also switching the thought. If someone's going to start with the superhuman activations, like what are the first, what are the things that you hope that they get from them initially? Yeah. And I guess I can kind of introduce what activations are because it wasn't called that when I first was on the podcast. So just to give everyone some backstory, I launched my company superhuman back in 2021. And when I first launched the app, I didn't know what to call these audios because I was recording these visualization audios that I could listen to in everyday moments for years. And this was kind of always how I helped my self-image change. So when I recorded them for the public, I didn't really know what to call them. So I just called them meditations because there was nothing really like it, but it was the most similar to meditation. And then fast forward two years, um, you know, after every single time listening to our customers say, this is not meditation. Like, I don't know what to call this. We decided to do a research study, figure out the new word, and then we came up with activations. Activations are audios that are designed to transform you into your future self. Meditations are audios you listen to with your eyes closed that are meant to calm you, to relax you. And there is definitely a place for meditation. God knows I probably need to maybe do a little bit more of it. But activations is what actually can transform your life from my perspective and from what I've seen with our tens of thousands of users, activations are different because we use energizing cinematic music. The guidance is all visualization, self-image changing based. And our audio engineers put so much effort into these audios to make it feel like you're in your own movie. It's like you're the, the main character of your life. You're living this big life already before it happens. And we have over 15 categories on the app from walking activations. And we actually started the whole walking activation or back in the day meditation boom. And I think that's another reason why we wanted to change to activations because it's like people aren't like they're they're kind of, I guess, seeing that it's working for us and doing their own spin, which is fine. But we were already such a different category and legs up on the wall. That's you introduced me to that. I created legs up wall meditation. Yeah. What do I do every morning? Your legs yeah. are all over the wall. My legs are up on and the wall. And then when people started kind of, I guess, like copying that, um, I just, it made me even more clear that we had to change the name from a business perspective, but then also from like the product. Our customers were like, this doesn't feel like meditation. This feels more like invigorating and I'm not listening to it with my eyes closed. So like, what is this? It's not really meditation. So then we launched the word activations. And since then, 
everyone feels more aligned with the name. And we were talking off air about how I launched Superhuman with the word meditation, always knowing from the beginning that I was going to change the name because it was never, I was never a meditation teacher. And, and I want, I want you to go off on that for a second, because I think a lot of us wait to put something out there until it's a hundred percent perfect. And we can't execute anything, whether it's an Instagram picture or or a new product until it's 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 so perfect. And what I like about your journey and what I resonate with is that you've embraced the pivot. Can you talk a little bit about that? I've always done things before I was fully ready. And I think that's an amazing quality. And a lot of entrepreneurs, it's like you just have to start and throw spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks. And that's why I just wanted to go. And meditation back then was the only word I could really think of. And I knew from the beginning, like I mentioned, that it wasn't always going to be that. But I also took that risk knowing that I'm going to have to kind of reeducate the audience and make sure everyone kind of uses the new word and make sure everyone's on board with that later down the line. But I, I think that quality of me doing things before they were perfect is what's gotten me to this place. And that kind of leads me to the discussion we were having earlier about how you can create your dream life without being perfect every day. That was a massive misconception that I had in the beginning years of my personal development journey. I was always so hard on myself because I didn't wake up. I didn't do the 5 a.m. morning routine. And then I would try and I tried jumping back on the bandwagon and then I'd come off. And and I just really felt so much shame around that because I was like, why can everyone else do this perfectly? And I can't. But then I realized everyone else isn't being perfect either. Not one person is perfect. And it's not about being perfect. It's about your bounce back rate. And that's what my book is going to be about, the bounce back rate, because it's a, t- a term that I coined. And it's all about how to reach the life that you want. You must bounce back fast. It's all about the rate at which you bounce back. It's not about being perfect. Be- perfection is not a measure of success because it doesn't exist. It's about how quickly you get back on the bandwagon. You get back to feeling like your future self. So over the years, my bounce back rate went from like three months down to now, like seconds. Honestly, if I'm feeling off, I just know how to change my state quite quickly now. Um, And I think the more that my bounce back rate has decreased in time, the faster my transformation has been. Michael and I do, we do a bounce back rate when we fight. No, but I think that's in in relationships too. It's like, how fast can you recover for something that was kind of a dumb fight? We recover, I'll like go psycho and then like I'll walk in the house like five minutes later and change my mood and it's a bounce back rate. It it really, I really, (laughs) I'm not being funny. Like we actually do the bounce back rate in our relationship. For couples out there, listen, there, I think there's, every couple is going to fight. It's inevitable. It's just, it's just what happens in a relationship. It's nobody's perfect to your point. And I think the couples that struggle the most are they take something that maybe should be considered like if there's a scale of one to 10 in fights, 10 being like the most serious thing, like an infidelity or something that's like not recoverable. And then one being like, hey, you left the the toilet seat down. (laughs) There's a lot of couples that get stuck in the one to three fights and they make it into a 10 because they don't know how to recover. Like that was dumb and move on. We we talk about this all the time in our relationship. Like we'll look at each other sometimes like, this is stupid. We're both tired. We, the kids yeah. were up all night. Like, move on. And we'll, and like, we don't need to then make it about something that happened eight years ago. But I think to your point, the bounce back is applicable in so many areas of life. Yeah. yeah. You know, you introduced me to something. I don't know if I told you this on the last podcast that's changed my life. And that's 528 Hertz. Do you oh, know no you way. told me about that? Oh, yes. I was the one who told you about that. Yeah. Yeah. You know where I found it? On your Instagram, you posted like, do you want to calm your nervous system? Uh, It was like a reel. You need to do it again. It was like way back. This is like two years ago. is actually really good for manifesting and for elevating your frequency. It's not, well, in my opinion, not necessarily all about, um, you know, making you more calm. For me, I use it to be in that future self energy. So that's amazing. We actually have our audio engineers put in these frequencies. That's what I was just going to ask you. Is it in the app? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, we have frequency music on the app. Like we have like 15 categories. We have a category with just frequency music with many different types of hertz for different things, whether it's increasing concentration or feeling, you know, like that manifestation frequency or feeling more love or whatever, or healing, um, whatever it is. But in our actual activations, like any of the ones that you'll listen to, most of the time, our audio engineers will just put in like a very unnoticeable level of frequency that just raises your vibration. I'm telling you, these audios, there's nothing else like it. There's nothing else that exists like it. Audio has changed my life inside and out. And like, I feel so passionately about this because it's like the one thing that I know will help everyone if they just listen. What's what's the one activation that you would start with 
if our audience gets the app? What's the one that you that you just think everyone will love? Okay, so this whenever someone asks me like what's my favorite activation, it always changes because it's always like the last one that I've recorded that like my audio engineers have mastered. So there is one that I'm actually giving you guys to post on the podcast for free. It's a walking activation, become your magnetic future self is what it's called, and I'm telling you I listened to it this morning and I felt like I was flying. It's like a natural drug. I felt like my whole body was just like turned up the dial of my frequency. I just felt like so my my just my heart was huge. I felt so abundant and happy and like just genuinely like my future self. And that's actually one that I'll say because we're going to give it to your audience for free, but also because it's the newest one. And we have this new um, musician that we're using for some of the music on the app. And he's amazing. Like I tell him he's the next Han Zimmer. Like he's just like so like epic music, you know. And that's what I really wanted to use for this, for activations. It's like the combination of that like epic movie moment, like energy type of music that changes your state. Because for me, when I'm listening to something to change my state, I need music and I need words that like really encourage me and remind me of my potential. And that didn't really exist. It was either meditations that were said in a very slow, calming way that just pissed me off. And that I was just already annoyed. I wanted to feel like I was like elevating in life. I wanted something with energy. And then I listened to like a motivational Tony Robbins YouTube video. that's just a bit too much yelling. And I wanted something that was like enjoyable to listen to. So that's kind of where activations came. It's a new form of audio. It's a new category in the audio space. And it's Really, you can listen to it anytime, anywhere, and it's designed to help you become your future self. I'm going to listen to that tomorrow on my morning walk with Towns. I put Towns in the stroller. I go outside. I get my sunlight. Can we do a code and a giveaway? Yeah, absolutely. For the audience? Yes. Okay, what's the code? Well, the code's actually a link because um, we have it so that your audience can get over 60% off wow, memberships. That's... Yeah, it's mega. Okay. So um, if you just go to activations.com slash skinny, okay. you can get a deal there. We'll leave it in the show notes too. Yes, just make sure not to go on the app store to get it. The, you can't really do discounts in the app store. So the discount's only on the website and then you can go download the app with your login details. But um, yeah. Can we do so, a giveaway? Yes. Okay. What's the, tell you me what it. you want. I'm happy to give a free yearly what, what? or whatever, a couple of free yearlies. I don't care. Let's do... Three people win a year in the Superhuman app. Yes. Okay. Let's do it. All you guys have to do is follow at Superhuman app on Instagram and tell us your favorite takeaway. There's a lot uh, from this episode on my latest post at Lauren Bostick. I highly recommend that you guys all go listen to Mimi's first episode because it really is inspiring to me to see your evolution. I'm excited to have you on in another two years and see that evolution What I love about you is that you're constantly trying to be the best version of your highest self and you're not settling for like society standards. Mm -hmm. And it's really inspiring. Where can everyone find you pimp yourself out? Thank you so much. Um, Well, I feel like I'm off social media a lot these days, but if you want to hang out with me, I'm on Instagram at Mimi Bouchard. Um, Honestly, I have social media deleted off my phone like 90% of the time, but I'm there sometimes to post deleted updates. just so you don't surf around? Yeah, I just, no. it doesn't align with my future self to scroll, but um, I like know. that. Yeah, um, but I'm also, my team posts for me on YouTube quite often, so we have like high quality content on there now. And your podcast. And my podcast, forgot about that for a moment, still doing that. It's been like six years. Um, so yeah, just one of those things I always have on the go. I know, but, but th- it's so rare to, to meet another podcaster that's been podcasting that long. Yeah, Good for you. It's Six just years consistency. Is a long time. Yeah, so you can find me on YouTube at Mimi Bouchard or my Instagram at Mimi Bouchard. And make sure to go grab your big discount at activations.com slash skinny. We actually never really do discounts, but I definitely wanted to do one for your audience. Since that's amazing. You guys discount. were so great last time. So um, yeah, thank you guys. Thank you, Mimi. Thank you, Mimi.